Now, if you know nothing about growing truffles, this is your video. Okay, we created this lecture for the Indian Mushroom Days 2024 because the, they wanted an introduction to truffle growing and for an audience that didn't know about mushrooms but had no idea about truffles, okay? So what we did here is to give an overview of everything you need to know if you want to start a truffle plantation and run it properly. To take out a little bit of the magic and of the misconceptions that we have about truffle growing and to do something that works. Okay, so I am Luz Cocina, I'm the CEO at Mycolab. We are a small Spanish company specialized in truffle cultivation. We only do that. We do uh, consultancy services if you want to start your plantation or if you want to manage it. We take care of all the analysis and also we have courses. Okay, so yes, so you know who we are in case you are new in our channel. We are going to tell you a little bit about wild truffles, where it all started, how do truffles grow, how do we make them grow in field conditions, what you have to do to start a plantation, how to manage it, very, very little of everything, so you have an idea which species of truffles are working and which are not, and how is this being done worldwide? Because right now we have plantations, we have clients all over the world doing this in areas that are not native to truffle growing, and it's working. Okay, so without further introductions, let's get started. Okay, so what are truffles? We call truffles any kind of fungus that grows in forest areas and that the fruiting body is underneath the soil. So we have to dig to take them out. Okay, the most famous truffles are from the genus Tuber. They are native to Europe, but there, there are truffles from the genus tuber all over the world, okay? Not only here, they have them in America, you have them in Asia, you have them all over the world in different uh, species. Okay, so how does this happen? The, uh, the fungus establishes a mycorrhizal relationship, a symbiosis relationship with the tree. The tree, you know, like, you know, like washes the hand of the fungus and the fungus washes the hand of the tree. The tree gets from the fungus protection from uh, pathogens. It gets nutrients from the ground. It helps absorbing nutrients from the ground. And the tree does something for the fungus that the fungus cannot do, which is to get carbohydrates for it, sugars. You know, fungus are not able to uh, do photosynthesis. They cannot do their own food. So they need the tree to help, to help with them. And so the truffle species, they cannot survive without a tree, a bush, or even in some cases, in cases, grasses. They, they, they can work with like annual plants too, but they have to be associated with the roots of a plant in order to survive. Okay, so the species that have been successfully grown are native to Europe, most of them, or America, and belong to the tuber genus. And you can see that we go in the forest with our dogs or in our plantations now to find the truffles, okay? The dogs are able to smell them when they are ripe because during the season, there may be many truffles in the ground that are not ripe and you're going to get the right price and the right size when they are ripe. So you have to go with dogs. That's compulsory. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So how does this work? So in order to grow truffles, to cultivate truffles, the first thing you have to do is to get trees or bushes that have the truffle in the roots. So the first thing we do is we inoculate young trees with the spores. We put spores in contact with the roots of young trees. And then what we do is we establish a plantation that looks a lot like a fruit tree plantation, like an orchard, you know, like apple orchard or anything like that. We establish a plantation and we take care of it with some different things that are not exactly the same, but it's more or less like taking care of any agricultural true, uh, fruit tree orchard with some special things that I will tell you about later. What are being, what truffles are being grown successfully? Okay, one of the things that people don't understand is that not all truffles are being grown successfully. Some of them maybe never will be grown successfully. And these three, are the, these three are the ones that at the moment, we can say that they are economically, especially the first two ones, viable. So the one, the queen, 
okay? That's why it has the star there, so you pay attention to that. The queen of the cultivated truffles is Tuber melanosporum, the black winter truffle. We have great success, we have huge plantations, we are getting a lot of kilos all over the world, and that's the one that we normally, when we talk about growing truffles, that's the one we are talking about. This is the example of huge success, big yields, a lot of money, a lot of benefit for the grower. Then we have the uh, summer truffle or burgundy truffle, depending on the, on the time of the year when it ripes, but they all are from the species Tuberae stevum. This one is successfully grown, it's not as popular, most of the time, because in a plot that you can do tubera stevum, you can do tuber melanosporum, tuber melanosporum, you get a lot more money for it, so you do tuber melanosporum, but it works very well too. Finally, we will have tuber borkai. It works, you get a lot of truffles, but we don't know for sure if it's going to be economically viable, because at the moment, normally you get them small because people are not irrigating. We need people to irrigate to see if they are going to be big enough that is worth it, because if you get a lot of tiny, tiny truffles, having to pick them up from the ground is a lot of, it's very labor intensive. It may not be a good option, but we don't know yet if it's going to be a good option or not. At the moment, tuber melanosporum is the success case. Okay. okay, you will hear a lot in social media, in the internet, from people about other truffles. Okay, so here you have the ones that are in field research phase, which, uh, what does that mean? That means that they have been able to inoculate successfully the fungus into the root of the trees or bushes they are using, and that they have been able for them to survive in field conditions, but we are not sure about production yet. Okay, the, the typical case that everybody knows about and that everybody is interested about is Tuber magnatum, Bianca di Alba. That's the white truffle from many parts of Europe, but especially uh, known from Italy. And this one, they have been able to get some yield, but it's random. You know, they have only gotten at the moment one plantation. They have been working on this at least 30 years. One plantation to produce all the time, uh, look, to produce two years in a row, 300 grams each year, as far as I know, is not a case of success. And in most cases, what happens is that after two, three years, if they get there, you know, the, uh, the mycorrhiza uh, disappears from the roots and they start producing something different. That's the same case with desert truffles. The one that you are seeing in the video is Terfecia claveri, which is uh, one of the desert truffles with Eliantemum almeriense, that's the, it's a bush. Uh, it's a rock rose that we do it with, and we do a lot of research in them, and our experience is that most of the time it gets to the field and then it disappears or produces something else. This is a case of success, and it's, uh, it has been successful for one year. The following year it didn't produce anymore. So we really don't know what is going on. It's in the research phase. So it's very popular in uh, you know, like the Middle East especially. Um, we are working on it, we'll see what happens. Then there are other species, those two uh, that you have there, you know, uh, Tuber canaliculatum and Tuber leoni, they are uh, American truffles. They have been able to inoculate them in the roots. We are not sure about yields either. So just in case they tell you about this, all this at the moment, they are, I mean, we hope they are reality one day, but at the moment are risk, are investment risk. It's very interesting if you want to try, we are very happy if you want, but it is a risk. Okay, so now we are going to center in Tuber melanosporum, black winter truffle. That's the one we are doing great. That's the one we are doing with success. It's wonderful. So we are going to tell you a little bit how it works very fast, so you have an idea. Okay, so this would be the annual calendar. They develop, okay, you get new truffles normally at the beginning of May until middle May. If you are in the southern hemisphere, just have the idea is that by middle spring. Middle spring until the end of spring you, is when you get the, the, the baby truffles to form, okay? And then they will be on the ground and they will grow slowly until they have uh, the fast growth stage, which is after the summer heat, and into autumn. When autumn starts, you get the fast growing stage and then they will stay in the ground until for some reason we don't know, they decide to develop a smell because they are ripe and they are ready to be eaten by animals and that's the way of making them know, okay? And that's when we harvest them with dogs. What about the plantation? The reality is that if you do a good job anywhere in the world that is suitable for truffles, by year three, four, you should get the first truffles. 
But that will only make you feel better <laughs> that things are working. But you're not going to get any kind of you know, real income from them. For things to start getting fun and get, starting to get high yields, you have to wait for year 10, 12, depending on how fast your trees develop. The highest production stage, you know, high yield will stay at between until year 20 to 24 normally. We have some examples until 30, but that's not normal. And from that, it goes down quite fast, and in three, four years, you lose production. So that you have an idea of how this works. Okay, so what are the steps if you want to do a plantation? The first thing you have to do, if you, in your country there are no nurseries that produce these plants, you have to produce your own plants. That's the boomer part, okay? If you are here, uh, listening to this from countries where you don't have nurseries or nurseries that you trust, the first thing you have to do is that. Then you have to prepare your plot, an agricultural plot. You have to make sure the trees can grow. You have to work them in, in depth. You have to make sure that you are crushing the rocks if there are too many after a soil analysis, very important. Sometimes uh, if the pH is not correct, you have to lime. That is very, very useful, especially in the southern hemisphere. We do it a lot. And apart from that, of course, you will have to analyze the plants. Make sure the plants have the fungus you are looking for, because a lot of times the plants will not have the fungus at all. Or even they will have another one, like you see in the video. OK, this is a Beloma. It's a plant contaminated. This is our lab, a plant contaminated with another fungal species. So you have to make sure that yourself or somebody in your country can analyze your plants and make sure that they have the right species. Finally, what you would do is you would put the plants in the field. You have to make sure that the plants are of high quality and they are resistant. And you have to treat, to treat them with care. Okay? The roots are very important to us, so we take a lot of care into planting them properly so the roots are in good shape. About works when the plants are small, you will have to, of course, like in any other, uh, you know, fruit crop, fruit orchard, you will have to take care of taking up the weeds, of weeding them, and of watering them. That is basically what you do when the plants are small. Okay, so this will be the implantation and the young plantation phase. Okay, what is different? Sorry. <laughs> what is different when we are talking about truffle growing from other fruit crops. Okay, some things are not different, some things are. The first thing is that we need to water a lot. We are talking about a fungus. And then another thing is that our fungus grows underground, our fruiting bodies. So we have to make sure that our soil is loose. So in many cases, we are going to use machinery. We have a special machinery designed for this already. Yeah, in many countries, you can buy them all over the world in order to lose the soil to make sure that the truffle can grow. Another thing we do, we normally call it nests or Spanish wells, is that we put substrate on the ground, you know, like peat moss, like what you use for pot, potting mix for plants, with the spores in order to make sure that uh, the truffle finds a medium that, you know, holds water for it and also that uh, has spores that are more, they are like, you know, like seeding the ground, sowing the ground to, to get new truffles. We have a specialized machinery uh, designed for this too. You know, this is adapted but from others. But And then sometimes we have to do amendments to keep on putting or raising the pH. So we also have machineries that are tools for that. Like the one you're seeing in the picture that I helped to design after a very bad soil analysis from a client, okay? And then one thing that a lot of people don't, want, don't, don't know because of movies and stuff like that is that it is compulsory to harvest the truffles with dogs. That's it. I mean, that is the only way you can do it. Okay, pigs. People talk about pigs. Pigs are unreliable. They will eat your truffles. They are very heavy. They don't fit in your car. And they don't follow orders. Dogs for many, many years have been the ones that have been used for hunting for, you know, for, uh, you know, in the snow to take up people, stuff like that. They are very, uh, you know, honest workers. They, uh, they listen to you, they work very well, and they have a very fine sense of smell to find the truffles. So those, those are the species we are using. Don't think about using anything else, except for show. You will see dogs, uh, dogs, sorry, uh, pigs, uh, and then like Asian pigs being used to, even white boards, that's just for show. When you have to work and you have to be professional, dogs is what we use. This is Lagotto Romagnolo, which is the 
most widely known species for truffles, but I mean, there are many, many species that work very well. Finally, the most probably important question for all of you is where can I do this? Okay, you have to be sure. The first thing you have to understand is that we cannot do this in tropical climates. Tropical climates, you don't have seasons. We need seasons. We need spring, winter, summer, and autumn. We need hot summers and cold winters, more or less, okay? What, uh, so you have an idea, if you have severe frosts, this is not a crop for you, maybe you can try with summer truffles. And if it's really, really hot in summer, your truffles are going to die in the ground, your little baby truffles. So there are limits, climatic limits to do this, okay? But as you, can, you are going to be seeing in the video, it's been done with great success all over the world. All these videos are from clients and collaborators of us that are getting very good results all over the world with truffles. It's not only Europe and it's not only Australia that everybody knows. We're talking about Chile, New Zealand, etc. More things. Of course, we need a soil where truffles can grow. So soils that are basically old stone or that are very, have a very tendency to harden, to compact, where the truffles, you know, like potatoes, they have to be able to grow. The truffles are not going to be able to fight against it and grow. They are soils that are not going to be good for us. That's the most important requirement. Most or, more or less the rest of conditions we can change. You don't have the right pH, we change it. You don't have the right organic matter, we change it. There are many things we can change, but if the soil compacts a lot, it is very difficult to change, okay? And of course, we need good quality water for irrigation. We are going to irrigate even Australia, the areas, you know, Manchimup, all these areas where they are getting like hundreds of kilos per hectare and they are famous for that and it rains a lot then still they irrigate, they don't have enough water, first. Secondly, you get a two-year drought, like they did, and then two years you don't get truffles. We're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars lost, okay? You don't want that. So make sure you can irrigate, okay? This is South Africa. They are having a great success there. You have the, U the USA that are, have been working for years on this. You have many, many places on the world. As long as you have the right climate, that doesn't have to be necessarily Mediterranean, it can be harder or even softer, you can do this. Okay, so what if you want to know more? The first thing we have to tell you is that we have some tutorials with more information in our YouTube channel or accessible through our webpage. I would recommend you, if you really want to continue with this, to follow us in social media. Okay, we basically post more or less the same in all of them, just the text changes a bit. YouTube, of course, is only for videos, so you won't have everything there. And then, of course, you can contact us if you want to start a plantation or improve the plantation you already have and you don't know what is going on and why you're not getting truffles or you're getting little or you're not getting enough, you can give us a call. And, of course, it's our job. We do consultancy there for you. Finally, if you really want to know a lot, a lot, a lot, as far as we know, these are the, you know, deeper, more intense, more intense and more technological courses there are in the market now, are the, the courses we offer, especially the farming, plantation management, harvesting and marketing of truffles is six days, it's very intense, you have to be to come relax and be able to have a good bed to sleep, because as you come from so far away, it's hard, but we would highly recommend you to do the courses if you really want to, to have a good base, because a, a consultancy service works, of course, but if you do the courses, you have all the information you need to, to really understand well your consultancy service. Okay, we hope you like it. If you have any questions, you can contact us, no problem. Uh, yeah, our idea was to give you an overview of how this works and we hope we got it right. Thank you.